Settlements may not be everyone's cup of tea in Fallout 4, and I suspect that is partly down to Preston constantly nagging us and then telling us there is a settlement that needs our help. And it could be in part because it takes us away from exploring the vast commonwealth in all of its glory. But for many players, settlements can play a major part in the game, and it can be quite daunting to get to grips with them early on. So I've decided to create this video going over a few essential tips that will help you out when building up settlements and linking them together. And if by the end of this video there are some more tips that you think are worthy of mentioning, please leave a comment below to help myself and others out. It's also worth noting that I'm a console player and I'm not using any mods at any point during this video. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get stuck in. First up, let's talk about water because this can be useful for a number of things. Now, a few settlements will be close to a water source, namely Sanctuary, which is the first one you'll come across, but a few other settlements that can support water purifiers are Finch Farm, County Crossing, the Castle, the Slog, and a few more. So what you want to do is build yourself a few water purifiers into that water source at each of those settlements, and then build some generators nearby to hook them up to power. And over time, these water purifiers will be placing purified water into your workbench, but only up to a certain point because there is a cap on how much purified water can be stored in a single workbench if your settlements aren't linked together. What I would do to combat this is place a container next to that workbench and every so often come back and place that purified water into the container and then go back to whatever I was doing so the purifiers start producing more water once again. The best thing to actually do is to link up all your settlements, more on that in a minute, because each settlement will require a purified water source, but aside from that, farming purified water can gain you loads of caps, especially early on, because you can just sell the stuff when you have excess amounts. So early on in the game, selling purified water is a great way to get some caps, and eventually you could be making thousands if you've managed to link loads of settlements together with multiple water purifiers at each of them. And that leads me nicely on to the second tip in this video, supply lines. The basic premise is simple, supply lines will connect multiple settlements together, meaning you can share resources between the linked settlements. If one settlement has excess of say, food or water, that excess will be shared with other settlements which need it more. Provisioners will transport resources between the settlements and if you encounter them in the wasteland, you can interact with them and give them more items to carry to another settlement. And not only that, but they'll also be an ally if they happen to be nearby when you engage in combat, assuming there aren't. Overall, there is a lot of information to take in for supply lines. I could probably make an entire video just on that. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll just cover the basics here and I'll go into detail in that separate video. So make sure you subscribe to my channel for that. But in order to set up a supply line between two allied settlements, you first need to have the local leader perk unlocked and then with the workshop menu open, if you go up to one of the settlers in one settlement and highlight a list of your own settlements and then select one to link to, that's about as far as it goes. It's quite simple really. You can also review existing supply lines by opening the world map and selecting C on PC or L1 slash LB on PlayStation and Xbox respectively. So let's talk about scrapping weapons. If you've built up a few settlements before, even just a little bit, you'll know they'll probably get attacked every now and again by raiders, super mutants, gunners, and so on. And when you come back to help defend the settlement, killing these guys will get you a lot of weapons in wide variety, which, if you decide to leave them there, will eventually disappear. So you want to make sure that you're using them in some way or another, whether that's arming the settlers or scrapping them. It's definitely worth storing a couple in the workshop or handing one and a single bullet to a few of your settlers because they'll use them to defend themselves if they got attacked again. And I say single bullet because for some reason that's all that is needed for them to have unlimited ammo. But when you know your settlers are armed, all of the rest of the weapons can and should probably be scrapped from your workshop menu. Even if you pick up weapons whilst out exploring, if you then bring them back and scrap them, assuming it doesn't take you over your carry weight and you've not got strong back level 4, this is a good idea as well. You all know how scrapping these weapons works, right? Drop them on the floor inside the settlement, open up your workshop menu and scrap them. Simples. You'll need to get, well sorry, you will be getting less common resources from these weapons and that can be super useful in building various components for your settlements. And... I would strongly suggest you pair this method with the scrapper perk because having that 
you'll be getting even more rare components from doing this, so things like screws and springs and gears, on top of more common ones like wood and steel. Let's talk a little bit about stores, because these can be useful in making you some more money. Now, they're not going to make you a millionaire anytime soon, but it's definitely worth setting up shops in your settlements to gain some passive caps, whilst you're off gallivanting away doing god knows what else. In order to actually set up these stores, you do need to have unlocked Local Leader Rank 2, so the same perk that gives you access to supply lines at level 1. Equally, some types of stores will increase a settlement's happiness instead of giving you caps for having them in there. And there are a few different types of stores that you can have, and there are also different tiers of each of them. The higher the tier, the better the resources of that shop stocks, and the more money you will make from them as well. The different types of stores that you can actually set up in a settlement are trade stalls, so things like junk and other stuff like that, armor stores, weapon stores, food and drink stores, medical services, and clothing. They're all pretty self-explanatory, but what you want to do is set up a few of these in your settlements across the Commonwealth, and then assign settlers to them. And this is where it sort of pays to have multiple allied settlements, because the income of caps from your stores into the workbench are capped, yes that pun was definitely intended, at a total of 50 caps per settlement per day. So it definitely pays to set up a few of these stores in your various settlements for a larger income stream. See, Preston ain't all that bad selling you to go and rescue these settlements and get them allied with you now, is he? You know, I mentioned earlier in this video about setting up a purified water farm and then selling that purified water. Well, the good thing is here, you can combine that tip and this one because you can sell the purified water directly to the stores in the settlement where your water farm is. And that means you don't have to log it all over the Commonwealth just to sell the damn stuff. Another thing worth noting is the cap collector perk under the charisma section. Because if you have that unlocked at level 3, that means you're going to be able to invest a total of 500 caps to raise the store's buying capacity. Now, I believe if you put this in one store, like one store type, say weapons for example, that buying capacity will apply to all stores of that type across all of your settlements. Basically, this, along with setting up the stores in the first place across various settlements, is a great method of getting rich in Fallout 4. Eventually. You just need to make sure you have enough settlers to assign to all of the stores you're going to set up. And that leads me nicely onto this next small tip. Set up recruitment radio beacons in your newly allied settlements to recruit, well, settlers of course. The more settlers you have across your settlements, the better your supply lines will be and the more stores you'll be able to set up, amongst other things like having them tend to food and whatever else you've got going on. These beacons can be found in the workbench menu under power and then miscellaneous. And the more of these beacons you've got set up over the commonwealth, the more settlers you'll gather, of course. There are a couple of caveats with this though, in that the beacon will not function at a settled settlement if you have more than four unassigned settlers at any given location. And the second one is, there is actually a chance the beacon will give you a Brahmin instead of a settler, and these mutated cattle are damn useful in settlements because they can provide you meat, milk, hide, and manual labour to go with it. So keep checking back at your settlements with beacons just in case one of these randomly turns up because they are integral to your settlements. This next tip may seem pretty damn obvious, but not everyone does it. You need to make sure you're assigning your settlers to various jobs to keep all of your settlements running smoothly. So I'm talking about assigning them to things like food production, water purification, defense, stores, resource gathering, supply lines, because not only will it make your life far easier throughout the entire game because you'll have spots you can gather these resources from, allies will help you out if they're nearby, places you can sell your stuff, and last but by no means least, they will make you rich. So Preston helping you get new allies from all these settlements isn't such a bad thing after all, is it? Now I do get him can be damn annoying from time to time asking you the same goddamn thing over and over again. And if you got in this far in the video, you're probably wondering why I haven't covered any specifics around the building side of things when it comes to settlements, and I've mainly covered other aspects of them, like managing and building them up overall. But fear not, I will be doing a separate guide on actually building within the settlements, as I thought it was worthy of having its very own video. And of course, I'll be doing a deep dive into supply lines in a separate video as well, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel for both of those.
And as I mentioned earlier in this video, if there are any other settlement tips that you guys think are worth mentioning that I haven't covered in this video, why don't you leave a comment below letting us know what those tips are. The more tips we can get in the comment section, the better. And that's all for today folks. There are a few essential tips when it comes to building and managing settlements in Fallout 4. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful and if you are still here it would be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You can now become a channel member as well and as always thank you for watching this video and I hope to catch you in the next one.